Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at dynamics and simulation, uh, specifically a rigid body uh, simulation, uh, and see a lot of the different uh, options and properties we have when we're dealing with these types of objects and interactions. So let's go ahead and get started. Here you can see uh, we have, you know, just some coffee beans as well as a bowl. All of these assets came from the asset browser here. Uh, so you should be able to grab them as well if you're in R25. And really what we're going to be talking about today, like I mentioned earlier, uh, are the simulation tags. Now there's really two groups of simulation tags here. There's our rigid and soft body, our dynamics, and then our cloth simulation tag. So we're going to focus on these today with the exception of the soft body. I might make another video about that at some point. Um, and you'll see this is actually a pretty easy thing to do. Uh, now with dynamics, since we are leaving a lot of the, the movement, the interaction to Cinema 4D, uh, it's very easy to get like 90, 95% of the, the movement or what you want it's that last five to 10% that can be tricky or fixing um, any small issues uh, that we may have. And so we'll see some of those, uh, I believe, uh, in the video as well. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is select a coffee bean, right click on it, go to our simulation tags and choose rigid body. Now, the second I go ahead and hit play, you'll see it just falls, all right? It now has gravity applied to it. That's what makes it uh, a um, uh, rigid body tag as opposed to something like a collider or ghost body. Uh, and that's what we see. It falls, it has gravity applied to it. Uh, how fast and all that stuff is handled by the mass as well as the speed of gravity, which uh, I believe is actually in the project settings. Um, but there we go. Now, what we want to do is take our bowl and have it interact uh, with the coffee bean, but we don't want to have gravity applied to this. And that is where the collider body comes into play. So similar concept. It's now part of the simulation. It just does not have dynamics or gravity uh, or other forces applied to it. So now when I hit play, we can see that the coffee bean is now in the bowl. Right, so that's kind of the basics of simulation. Now we can start going through the tags and seeing a little bit more. Now I mentioned in the dynamics tag, really the biggest difference uh, between your um, rigid body tag or your uh, collider body is the dynamic option here, whether it's set to on or off or ghost, which is really the, the difference between those three tags. Now we can also decide if we want this to trigger immediately or let's say on a collision, which we'll see here shortly. Uh, deactivation is important since it allows our objects to stop moving once they get below um, these thresholds for velocity or rotation. Um, collision, all right. Uh, the first two options here, inherit tag is gonna be important with hierarchies. Uh, if you're say, you know, working with cloners, the good news is, these should be set up in a way that you really don't have to worry too much about them. But uh, let's say your, your cloner is acting like a, a big chunk uh, is a single object. This would be the place to check. Uh, we have different shape options. Um, automatic isn't a bad place to start, but if you do run into issues, moving mesh uh, is gonna be a little bit more accurate. Uh, it does result in slower simulation speeds. Mass, all right, so in theory, it comes from kind of the size of the object. If you want to do something differently, um, you can uh, specify it there. Should you want to add other forces, you can add them or exclude them right here. By default, every force you add from the simulate menu and forces is going to you know, apply to all of our simulations um, and all of our objects unless we tell it specifically otherwise. And then lastly, cache, uh, where uh, we can save out the simulation information in our file so that Cinema 4D doesn't have to have to calculate it every time uh, it plays through. Uh, and this is also really important if you're going to be rendering on a render farm or multiple computers. But let's see uh, what more we can do here. I'm going to add a rigid body tag to the rest of my coffee beans. All right. So we've gone ahead and done that. And now you can see we have our basic setup and you can see the coffee beans 
you know, kind of uh, rotating a little bit on their own. That's kind of one of those little problems um, I've mentioned before, or I mentioned before uh, that you'll run into. And really it would be, uh, like I said, adjusting um, the deactivation properties to get those to um, settle down. Um, a little surprised to see that as I didn't previously, uh, but you know, what are you going to do? So let's say we wanted a whole bunch of coffee beans, not just uh, four. Um, what I'm going to do is put these coffee beans in a cloner and I'm not too concerned about the subdivision surfaces. So I'll get rid of those, but I'll tell you what, oh, where'd my coffee beans go? Let's find our coffee beans. Ah, I see. That's right. They're just really spread out here in our grid. So let's adjust the spacing here. Um, I'm going to do, yeah, per step. Because I want these coffee beans to be as close together as possible. Another very common issue you will see working with simulation is that when things are intersecting and they're a part of a simulation, they can kind of explode. Uh, so we'll probably see that, right? Start adding some vertical. Now these coffee beans are to scale, which honestly for very small objects in a simulation can be a bit problematic. I have found kind of using larger objects uh, than their scale uh, does tend to work a little bit better um, in certain situations. But, you know, in this case, I think we'll be, be okay. Now, as it stands right now, each coffee bean has its own dynamics tag and everything is still going to work just fine. Okay, there's a little bit kind of, of a hitch initially. All right, you can see everything's still kind of shaken. All right, but another way of doing this in an easier way so that you don't have to worry about adjusting the settings on four different tags would be to delete them and add the rigid body tag directly to the cloner. And that's where some of those collision um, options like inherit tag and individual elements comes into play. Like I said though, I don't think that's something that's really gonna be an issue um, with this particular option or setup. So this is looking pretty good, but I think we can go a little bit more. So I'm gonna just make more coffee beans. Uh, I'm also gonna change the mode here from iterate to random just to help randomize the order here. And you'll notice that these are intersecting. Um, however, they're really not um, kind of exploding uh, like I'm used to seeing. So I guess that's a good thing, though also means I can't show it and demonstrate it, but all you have to do is space things out a little bit more. Uh, I am gonna also add a random effector, right? Not so much to space these out, but to give them some different rotation values and adjust the scale a little bit so we get just some some random some different sizes here just to, to make things look a little bit more natural and organic all right so there we go and you can see uh we actually lost some of the coffee beans through all right the ground there and that is another kind of issue uh that is typically a scale issue it's can also be a problem if your geometry doesn't have enough polygons, but uh, really what I'm seeing is it looks like we do. Uh, and what we could see is maybe it's the random effector and uh, the scaling, all right? Making some of the beans too small, they, so they kind of slip through. That appears to be what the problem was. And so uh, hopefully you're seeing that there is a little bit of troubleshooting here uh, when it comes to um, dynamics when it comes to simulation. And that's like I said before, you can get 90% of the way really quickly, uh, but sometimes it's not worth the headaches uh, to get that final five to 10%. Now, simulating a bunch of coffee beans like this, definitely something I'm gonna do with simulation and not you know keyframing each individual one. Uh, but you know if this was a little bit simpler, maybe I only had one or two coffee beans or some other hero object, uh, it may be something I just wanna keyframe uh, myself. So, that's a look at uh, our dynamics. The last thing I want to take a look at is our ghost body. So here's a cube. I'm going to make it much smaller. Now this ghost body can be used to trigger these or other dynamic objects and have them join the simulation. 
And to set this up, I'm gonna go into the dynamic section, switch the trigger from immediately to on collision. And so now when I hit play, nothing happens. But if I was to take this cube and add a ghost body to it, now that as I start moving this cube through and the beans start uh, colliding with it, you'll see that they then start becoming a part of the simulation. Okay, now there's a, a minimum speed here. Okay, so that's why if I do it too slow, we don't see them move. But if I do it fast, you can see we do see them. So this can be a very nice way to once again kind of trigger an animation, uh, a dyna dynamic animation. Um, it can also be used to kind of make things a little bit more organic um, because not everything starts at once. Uh, the only issue with using a cube like this is you have to find a way to hide it from your final render view, uh, which isn't too difficult, but it is one more thing to think about. So that's what I got for you guys in this video. Once again, if there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know and take care.